So I thought about it, and it was kind of like, why didn't you just do vocab with the lectures here? It just kind of made sense, so I'll incorporate it from this point on. Uh, we're going back to the argument here. And with argument, we got to think about a whole different gameplay, essentially. Same rubric of thesis, evidence, sophistication, and all that. But it's now not looking at like an author's work anymore. It's simply our own work, right? Our own take on something. And then being able to supplement it with our own legacy of pathos, but also our own kind of like rhetorical devices ourselves. So now, whatever you saw in the rhetorical analysis kind of like segment, right? Satire and... Um, speech voice and different writing techniques we're going to incorporate that into the argumentative um, section here just to see how we're able to like spice it up in our own ways to earn sophistication but also to argue effectively our stance right so the first one we're looking at is charity and this is 2007's ap prompt here um, we'll look at how to approach it what are some steps to take and it's kind of getting back into the whole argument process essentially right for the ap exam so without further ado uh, let's jump to some vocab real quick here i got five words for you and the first one is philanthropy. It's a big one for this um, unit here. And essentially, philanthropy is the desire to promote the welfare of others, expressed especially by the generous donation of money to good causes. Basically, when you're like, you know, giving to charity, you're kind of a philanthropist, right? Someone who donates for the welfare of others, usually for goodwill. Um, philanthropy kind of has that element to it. But I guess you could kind of like be a philanthropist who is looking for like, I don't know, tax exemptions, whatever, right? So example sentence, he acquired a considerable fortune and was noted for his philanthropy. So this person had a lot of money, they gave it away to whatever causes they wanted to and became a philanthropist in that way there. Vicissitude, ugh, weird word. But basically, a change of circumstances or fortune, typically one that is unwelcome or unpleasant. So oftentimes you would give a charity to people who have gone through their own vicissitudes, right? People who've gone through their kind of like hardships and so forth. So example sentence, her husband's sharp vicissitudes of fortune. So her husband might have been like, you know, successful before and then went down in life there. Tawdry, showy but cheap and of poor quality. Pink flamingos are tawdry, right? Because they are showy, but they're really like plastic essentially. And they're supposed to represent like the idea of middle class and wealth, which I mean, it doesn't really show it necessarily in a good way. So it's tawdry. It's kind of gaudy. It's gaudy in the sense. Tawdry jewelry. It's something that is too showy, but in that way becomes like poor taste. Disconcerting. Causing one to feel unsettled. So if you feel kind of like this anxiety, this angst here, you might have something that's disconcerting to you there. Example sentence. He had a disconcerting habit of offering jobs to people he met at dinner parties. So it's kind of like people would get annoyed by that, unsettled, it's kind of like, why are you offering me this job? It seems kind of sketchy, or you're kind of like condescending to me essentially here, and then later it becomes disconcerting in that way. And here's the last one, incorrigible, of a person or their tendencies not able to be corrected, improved, or reformed. She's an incorrigible flirt. So they keep flirting, and they don't really know how to change, nor do they want to, right? So in this case, incorrigible, it's just things that can't like be bettered essentially there so sometimes people argue that charity is an incorrigible um task like it doesn't actually do anything good for people right it just kind of um prolongs the suffering of those going through their conditions there so speaking of charity this is a 2007's prompt here and argument you gotta consider everything right i mean we always, we always do but especially for argument because this is kind of like the mo that they're giving us here to work off of and nothing else there's no passage to read it's just whatever this is here so in 2007 they asked a weekly feature of the new york times magazine is a column by randy cohen called the ethicist in which people raise ethical questions to which cohen provides answers the question below is from the column that appeared on april 4th 2003 you guys weren't born yet that's weird <laughs> that's really weird to me Anyways, so the question is this, this person's calling in to Randy Cohen, and the question is, at my high school, various clubs and organizations sponsor charity drives, asking students to bring in money, food, and clothing. Some teachers offer bonus points on tests and final averages as incentives. Incentives are like things that you do for like a gang, essentially, right? To participate. Some parents believe that this sends a morally wrong message, undermining the value of charity as a selfless act. Is the exchange of donations for grades okay? 
It's a good question. We've been there before, right? Teacher asks for this, you get grades for that. So it's kind of like, is that ethical? So here's the further part of the prompt here. The practice of offering incentives for charitable acts is widespread from school projects to fund drives by organizations such as public television stations to federal income tax deductions for contributions to charities. In a well-written essay, develop a position. Here's the actual argument part, right? A position on the ethics of offering incentives for charitable acts. Support your position with evidence from your reading, observation, and or experience. So that's all we're looking at here. We're only looking at this little line here. Everything else before is kind of like just some brainstorm stuff and some context, but the actual question is your position on the ethics of offering incentives for charitable acts. So if you're doing charity, you get something back essentially there, which for some might defeat the purpose of charity because it's kind of like, well, aren't you supposed to donate for like the goodwill of it? Well, I mean, that means it doesn't hurt to have something you know, in return, right? So let's think about the context of the question asked by this caller, right, of grades. Um, I mean, doesn't that kind of undermine grading? Doesn't that undermine school, essentially, that you can, like, pay to win, essentially, for your grade here? I don't know. It's up to you to kind of argue that. So step one, considering perspectives, your POV, right? Um, this is for later on. I want to give you some slides here, but I want you to take a moment here to think about your own POV, your own perspective on this, right? Not even just on school for charities, but charity in general, right? If you are doing charity, should you be allowed to receive something in return? Or is that unethical or unethical here? And what's your reason for that? So I'm gonna have you kind of like brainstorm a couple of points here, and then later you're gonna have to um, maybe change that a little bit, or maybe you hold on to it there, but otherwise it's kind of like your initial beliefs, right? Because these argument essays are what you believe. You're free to argue your own stances as long as you have the good um, logos to support it and the evidences that would make sense with it there, right? So consider your POV, and after which you have to attack that premise, right? You have to think about situations you've been in, the world around you. You have to think about like, you know, have you ever been a person who's gotten points or some bonus from charity? Um, have you been the person who watched someone receive the bonus, right? And think to yourself like, mm, that wasn't very fair or that wasn't very like good spirited in nature there. So this is up to you to attack, right? Attacking the premise and to think about like whether or not you agree with it there. Um, I put a video for you to consider too. It's from Ricky Gervais. It's kind of, he's a British comedian and he kind of considers charity too. Or not him, but like his friend Carl Pilkington. And they have a little bit of a talk regarding charity. So if you want to watch that, go ahead. But otherwise, um, what I want to offer you too today is a couple of perspectives regarding charity and what other people have thought about it in the abstract, right? So on one hand, uh, to begin with a little bit of a um, allegory, I guess a little story, a parable. The boy and the starfish, common little story, and it goes something like this. Once upon a time, a man walking along a beach saw a boy picking up starfish and throwing them into the sea. He asked the boy why he was throwing starfish into the sea. The boy replied, the tide is going out. If I don't throw them in, they'll dry up and die. The man smiled patronizingly and said, but there are miles of beach and thousands of starfish on every mile. You can't possibly make a difference. The boy smiled, bent down, picked up another starfish, and threw it into the sea. Well, he said, I made a difference for that one. And that's the thing about charity, right? People would argue, well, you can't help everybody in the world, but you are helping somebody at least. You're actually helping somebody get a better life, opportunity here. So it's better than nothing, obviously. And it does make a significant impact for the individuals who do receive charity here and there. So in this case, maybe charity is good. Maybe charity does have some merit and some value to it. On the other hand, Thoreau actually argues the opposite. If you don't remember Thoreau, he was the whole transcendentalist, right? The guy who lived in the woods and said, like, simplify, simplify, and, like, the world is in the individual person. And he says, philanthropy is almost the only virtue which is sufficiently appreciated by mankind. Nay, it is greatly overrated, and it is our selfishness which overrates it. A robust poor man, one sunny day here in Concord, praised a fellow townsman to me because, as he said, he was kind to the poor, meaning himself. And the thing about Thoreau that he argues is that when we do charity, it's overrated because we do it not for the goodwill, we do it because we feel good about it. Or that we do it and only one person's praising, you know what I mean? The person who benefits, obviously. So it's not like the world recognizes as a good, it's just the sort of like, you know, uh, A and B kind of transfer of money here. So oftentimes when we do charity, it's not really of morals and ethics, it's more about the fame that comes from, or the feeling of it, right? So is it genuine? Maybe not. Reinhold Niebuhr, 
he is an African American who received charity, but he also criticizes it too. So in this case, he makes this quote, the Negro schools conducted under the auspices of white philanthropy encourage individual Negroes to higher forms of self-realization, but they do not make a frontal attack upon the social injustices from which the Negro suffers. And Niper's point is this, right? Is charity good? I mean, it benefits some, but you're kind of using it as an excuse sometimes to ignore the bigger whole, right? Like, what about all the other African Americans who aren't receiving the good, right? It's kind of like, it's kind of like if white society said, well, we did charity, and then later you look at the rest of those who are suffering who didn't receive the charity, and say, well, what about the systemic racism that still exists? So in this case, Niebuhr is kind of like observing how charity sometimes is misguided, or it only tackles that little bit, and that's an issue because it becomes a scapegoat or an excuse. Hobson, J.A. Hobson, he makes another point about uh, charity here, and I'll just read it verbatim a little bit, and he says, it is more socially injurious for the millionaire to spend his surplus wealth in charity than in luxury. For by spending it on luxury, he chiefly injures himself and his immediate circle. But by spending it in charity, he inflicts a graver injury upon society. And you might be thinking like, wait, how's it possible that a celebrity or some billionaire or whomever spending on their own goods is better than helping others? Well, how's that the case? And for Hobson, he argues, the thing is, if the rich are able to heal, right, the poor around them. Then later it takes away the responsibility of others because other people are like, oh, well, I mean, Bill Gates donated to Africa like $50 million. I don't got to do anything anymore. And it takes away our own integrity for charity then. Robert Egger. On the other hand, charity is something that is, well, non-judgmental, right? Charity is good morally for some and Edgar, he's a, a chef. He helps um, those who really can't afford a, a decent life, those who've been cast aside, essentially. And he says, what we've really kind of devolved into is almost cause of the year was popular who has the best pitch. In the anti-hunger world in which I live, I hate to say this, but I have to compete sometimes with people who want to feed children to the exclusion of others. And I hate that. All hunger is wrong. Don't create this kind of caste system in which the public is given choices they don't have to make. So Edgar's point is this. Charity is very selective, right? Sometimes people will help this cause, but not this one. Is that morally correct to help this group when everybody is suffering in that case then? I don't know. That's Edgar's point and his kind of pitching for charity. I think it's my last one. Music. Second to last one. Harford. He argues this, even the way we choose to dole out cash betrays our true motives. Some of the hundred dollars to give away in a world full of worthy causes should choose the worthiest and write the check. Here's the problem with charity. We often try to, try to like divide and conquer our money so we make the most bang for our buck, but we don't, you know what I mean? So let's say there's like 10 charities, right? And I have a hundred dollars. 10 for you, 10 for you, 10 for you. I mean, it's nice, but then later it also kind of begs the question of, well, wouldn't it be nice if like we could just give that 100 to the one that we feel is um, the most important, right? The one that we feel is the, uh, I guess, what do you call it? Uh, most notable or the one that is the best, essentially. But the problem is people kind of like spread their money across, right? And the more you spread the money across, the less value every donation has. It takes a lot of people then to actually make some sort of change. And that's Hart first point where he's kind of like, charity is kind of selfish. It's selfish because it's trying to make us feel like we're contributing a lot when really we're not. Putting like a penny here, a dime there, a quarter there, doesn't really add up, right? So my last person I want to introduce to you is Slavage J. And he's actually this picture the Santa Claus guy here, he's not a random old dude, by the way. Um, he's actually like a modern day like sociologist and philosopher. But Zhe argues this, that when we do charity, we're usually not doing it because um, we're trying to help the world around us. We're doing it to fulfill a sense of obligation. We're doing it in a way where we do charity to feel like we're making the most of our money. So he gives an example of Starbucks, right? Imagine this. You're at Starbucks and they say, for every, uh, I don't know, cup of coffee you buy, right? We're going to put a quarter to Africa. And you're thinking like, oh, well, it's great because now I can do charity and I'm also getting my coffee. Um, that's dangerous because now we're saying that charity is tied to buying stuff. And then later it loses value then because now 
you know, before you would have money and then you have charity, but now the worlds are together, so you don't have a separate identity for charity altogether. And that ruins our moral consciousness and this incentive system. But he's not against charity either because he has this quote, I'm not against charity, my God. In an abstract sense, of course, is better than nothing. Let's be aware, though, that there is an element of hypocrisy, which there is. If you do donate, you're also admitting that, you know, you're not doing the bigger cause. You're just trying to, like, put a little band-aid on the situation there. So that's kind of like his philosophy on this whole situation here. So these are all different views regarding charity. And you don't have to adopt any of them. It's just that you get some perspective about charity, right? It's not so simple as a topic anymore. It's a lot of nuance to it here. And I'm going to have you now consider outlining. So using the stance that you came up with, I'm going to have you think about three possible topic sentences, or at least like three main points that you can argue off of, right? Because in any essay for AP, you want about like two or three body paragraphs or two or three good points here. So I'm going to have you consider three points now as to what then would defend your point of charity. Let's say you argue charity is bad, right? Well, what are some three things that would, well, prove that essentially, right? Charity is bad because it's... Um, morally selfish like we saw earlier charity is bad because it makes us i don't know buy into the capitalist system and now you need some examples for that too so as you go through these examples or sorry making your own examples here i'm gonna have you consider well why this topic sentence why this point here and then later what are you trying to argue with it there so i'll give you an example of an outline point right so let's say my topic sentence is incentives take away the inherently goodwill from people when they perform charity so I could use examples of people donating to foreign countries. I can use it as um, people donating their, um, I don't know, used goods to like homeless and so forth. So that it's more of um, it's more of just them having their own convenience rather than like feeling as I'm doing good for another person, which might or might not be a good thing, but it's entirely up to you to argue, right? Um, and I'm going to have you consider some points and some things that you've seen in society, in history, in, I don't know, the news, whatever, that support your point there. And that's our start to argument. It's all really just perspective and how you're able to articulate that perspective for your reader.